Hello, and now we're gonna be joined by uh, tennis star Ashton Morris. Ashton, thank you very much for joining us on the Athletics Roadshow, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank you for having me. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, how has the season gone for you so far? Yeah, so the season is early on for us. We just got back from our spring break trip. Um, it was really good. We had a lot of tough losses, but I think the competition we were playing was really strong, which is what we want. You know, you don't want to peak in the, when you're not playing conference players. So overall, I'm really glad with the work we put in down there. I'm really happy with the results I had, even though I had some tough losses. I think it was good, you know. I'm excited to build off it and see what we can do moving into conference play. This is technically your fifth year at Baldwin Wallace? Yep. So just like Alex, what brought you back to Berea uh, one more time for one more run at, at things? Yeah, so honestly, COVID really shook up the world in so many ways, especially for college students. And I didn't think I was going to take my fifth year of eligibility, but it was my senior senior year, fall semester, and I was looking at jobs, and I realized that I wasn't ready to graduate, and I had an extra year of eligibility, and I thought this was the best decision for me professionally and also to keep playing. I love BW. I love the athletics, and I love the people here, and it just gave me more time to really figure out what I wanted to do but also continue doing what I love. So what is it that you want to do once you, you hang up the rackets for BW. Oh man, that's coming up soon too. <laughs> um, so I have an English major, art history minor, and a marketing minor. And marketing is what I want to go into. I'm actually working um, part-time right now downtown at a digital marketing agency. And at the end of my training period, I'll have an opportunity to interview for a full-time position. So that's ultimately my goal is to land a full-time position and work um, for that digital marketing agency. What is it about the field that you like? I really like marketing because marketing is so important and integral to all of our lives in so many different ways, but um, I have a business background in terms of my family and I love the entrepreneurial spirit and marketing combines a lot of the things I love with communication, um, the business strategy, and that's sort of what really drawn me to marketing. Yeah, taking a look at your career on the court, um, before the, 19, or the 2020 season uh, was canceled due to the pandemic, you had four wins at singles, four wins at doubles, uh, and then last year you, you really kind of stepped up your game. What was it that led to such an increase in production uh, record-wise? I mean, you, you had a, a great, I guess, first senior season, <laughs> if you, if you want to label it that, but you, you really seemed to make a – a big leap mm -hmm. uh, in terms of results. Yeah, I knew that last year was a really important year for me to make a statement for myself. And when the season was canceled during my junior year, I had a really tough match on spring break because that's where everything was shut down and I had a really tough loss. And honestly, I told myself, I don't want to play like that. I am going to take this time and really turn my game around for the better. And that motivated me. And I knew I've always played in the top of the lineup, like freshman year I played third singles and pretty much have played second singles or first singles um, in the subsequent season so it's a lot of pressure and the talent you're playing is very strong and I knew that I had the potential to compete well with those players but I needed to put more time in on the court and that was my goal for last year to really make a statement and moving into this season especially in conference play that's I want to keep building off that. That was uh, one of my questions was just your your ability to play at the top of the lineup so early in your career. Uh, Record-wise, you may not have been where you wanted to be after your first couple of years in the program, uh, especially because you're such a competitor. But did that experience ultimately, do you think, helped you w where you are today? A hundred percent. I mean, I came in my freshman year playing first singles all four years in high school. And it's really a shift when you go from high school tennis to college tennis because tennis is pretty much an individual sport, but in college they make it a team sport. So you're playing doubles and singles. And I had a reality check, not only playing lower in the lineup than I typically did in high school, but the competition I was playing was much stronger. And the people I was playing were challenging me, not only physically, but mentally, because it was a different type of pressure. And I wasn't just winning for myself or wanting to win for myself, but it was for the team. And um, I had a dose of reality and every loss 
definitely taught me something, and even the wins. Like you always, I try to take something away from every match I play, both in singles and doubles. So that experience early on, I mean, I'm pro my record when I leave probably not the best on paper, but I know that I am a much better tennis player because of it. You have to embrace that that mindset though of of learning from every matchup and and then also applying it to become a physically better player. What was it that you did to kind of ensure that you'd have enough, you know, conditioning and desire out there when you have to play doubles and singles? Oh yeah, that that definitely is challenging especially in the conditions. Um when it's really hot, it takes a toll on you. There's so many doubles matches that go very long, and then you have to go right out and play singles. But I put a lot of time off and on the court during in-season and off-season. I like to lift at least two to three times a week. I'm practicing four to five times a week, um, and I'm doing the things I need to do. I'm stretching, I'm eating right, I am hydrating enough, which is super important. People don't realize that. Um, but I'm taking the time necessary to prepare myself the best that I can when I step on court. What's tougher, the physical grind or the mental grind when you're playing? <laughs> you're, you're playing two matches a day, like you said, sometimes in the heat. And But when you're in Ohio, sometimes you could be playing in 38 with impending rain coming <laughs> yeah. your way. So you got to deal with all that. Is it harder mentally or physically? Mentally, 100%. I mean... I think that there have been so many matches physically I'm fine like I can keep going I could go for two hours but it's the mental toll that's really difficult um, I've worked with a sports psychologist for years and honestly that was one of the biggest changes for me um, it's about my sophomore year I just was so hard on myself um, I'm a perfectionist which probably doesn't surprise you but right. um, both on and not off. looking at your resume I mean it's a pretty <laughs> we'll get to that in a second it's pretty impressive um, but no I'm not surprised by that one iota uh, thanks. But, um, <laughs> And he has been such an important person in my life, not only on the court, but also just helped me see life in a different way in a healthier mindset. And I definitely think that was super important for me because the mental aspect of tennis is so hard because there's could be some days you are playing the best you can. Like you are playing lights out and they're just better than you or the conditions, the wind, impending rain you can, things are out of your control and one thing that I have tried so hard and I definitely think this is the maturation of time especially now being my fifth year that you can only control the things that are in your control you can't control your opponent you can't control your, the weather you can't control your doubles partner there's no sense in getting worked up about things that you just have no ultimately no control over looking at, at yourself and your career as, as from a leadership standpoint how do you think you've developed and how do you kind of help the younger generation of Yellow Jackets maybe avoid some of the pitfalls that you had to work through? Yeah, um, definitely, I'm pretty candid about this. Early on in my tennis career, I think I was more in it for myself because it's really hard to shift from that mindset of playing high school tennis where it's more about you and then transfer into that team mindset. But I think one of the turning points was my sophomore year, I was in the Sig, uh, Sig Radcliffe Student Fellows leadership class and learned about character-based leadership with um, Alan Culp. Loved that class. Ludd was actually in that class with me, so it's nice that he's still here too. Um, <laughs> but I learned the importance of putting the team first, and there's going to be times when I'm not playing my best or I lose, and I have a tough match. But you know what? If my teammates are still playing, i got to put that aside, and I'm cheering them on. And that's what I try to lead by example with the other girls because it is hard. You you are out there competing for yourself and you obviously want to win, but it's about the team. And a win at first singles is just as important as a win at six singles. It doesn't matter what court wins, it's a team effort. So I definitely try to encourage the other girls to think outside of themselves whenever you are playing. Taking a look at what you've done in the classroom, you're a three-time academic all-OAC student athlete, and you play a unique sport in that it bridges both the fall and the winter semesters. How have you been able to find that balance to have the success that you have both on the court and off as a 4.0 student? Uh, yeah, it definitely took some time. Um, it's was really about a planning. I had to look at my schedule, I had to see the classes I needed to take, and I had to be smart about it. If I knew our conference season is primarily in the spring, then my fall semester I needed to 
take more hours or take some harder classes. And it was all about time management. Um, I make sure to schedule my day out pretty much every single day in terms of when am I going to do my schoolwork, when am I going to play tennis, when I'm going to lift, when am I going to have time, you know, to eat, other things. <laughs> but um, it is a skill that you grows with time, and I think academics has always been my number one. I mean, I am very proud of my athletic achievements, but I know leaving BW, I'm most proud of what I've done in the classroom. But with that being said, sports are still very important to me, so I've always found a way to prioritize it amongst all the things that I still have been doing. You're a Dean's List student, a Jacket Scholar, you're a member of three honor societies, <laughs> great tennis player. Overall, can you even pick one of your favorite or most proud moments that you've had at BW? Oh, man. You know, I've been here five years. It's hard. <laughs> you're asking me to pull out some good memories well I think probably one of my proudest moments was during April 2020 um, I was published in the case Western Reserve's first ever Annis Field Wolf um, reflection exhibition and as a writer it especially I've heard I'm a great writer from my BW professors but having uh, one of my works chosen by someone outside of the organization in the school was something I was really proud of and it's still very very proud of and having a published work is something that I I don't know if I will ever find something that I'm more proud of. <laughs> no and coming from someone whose day job is as a writer uh, it, there's nothing quite like seeing your name uh, in print in a journal or a newspaper or a trade publication I mean it's just some you take so much pride in that because you pour your heart and your soul into it and, and you want it to be good because your name's attached to it forever so you want it to be absolutely oh, yeah. perfect uh, so I get exactly what you're saying about having that proud moment and being a perfectionist I don't want to ever put my name on something that's not good and I know you're the exact same way yeah. and I'm super proud of the fact that I was able to represent BW and especially the English department because um, it looks great for the school to show what a BW, ed BW education can do for you, and that is something that um, I will never take off my resume. Even if it's in <laughs> 10 years, I'm keeping it on there. <laughs> Speaking of BW, what was it initially that made you want to be a Yellow Jacket? Yeah, so I have a lot of family legacy at BW. My great-grandpa is in the athletic um, Hall of Fame. I do not live up to his pedigree um, by any means. <laughs> um, my grandpa also went here for, and played football and I think I've had some extended family members that went to the conservatory and you know it was a matter of time that another Morris ended up here. My brother went to Kent, my dad went to Miami and you know I took up the helm. I'm really <laughs> glad I did but um, I visited campus pretty much with an open mind even though I knew a lot of my family had gone here. I, really, I wanted to experience it for myself fell in love with the school, the academics, loved the English department, and playing tennis was really a bonus. That wasn't th the reason I came here, but it was icing on the cake. Yeah, you had quite the legacy in front of you to live <laughs> yeah. up to, and I think yeah. I think you've done a, a pretty darn good job, if <laughs> I can say so myself, academically and athletically. <laughs> I you. mean, you are in some rarefied air, my friend. <laughs> uh, your final season here at BW, you know, you're in the midst of it. What are you hoping that you can accomplish individually and as a team before you get on out of here? Yeah, first and foremost, I just want to make the most of these last two months. I love my team, love my coach, love the guys team. I mean, I'm just looking to keep making memories with them. Um, one thing I try to take into everything I do is not to be thinking about these are my last like these are my last moments and having expectations because that's one thing my sports psychologists and my coaches have told me is that if you go in with all these expectations you're going to psych yourself out and it's not there's nothing wrong with having personal goals to have something to work towards to because you need that but you don't want it to hamper you from enjoying the moment and staying in the moment um but my personal goals i mean think anyone at first singles i want to be player of the year Without a doubt. I mean, the competition's tough. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. John Carroll, Otterbein, Northern, I mean, everyone. You never want to count anyone out. Um, but I want to just keep building off of my personal season last year. But as a team, I want to make the conference tournament top four, without a doubt. We were so close last year. We had an unfortunate um, COVID issue that the whole team couldn't play in terms of our conference match to make it to Cincinnati. But I 
have no doubt that we can make it there this year. We have a lot of talent, a lot of new talent coming in, and I'm really proud of the girls. Um, spring break was a great time for us to bond, and like I said earlier, we had some tough losses, but I think everyone is better for it, and that is my goal. I mean, obviously, the ultimate goal is OAC champion, but, you know, take things one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ashton, thank you very much thank for your time. You. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Best of luck thank uh, these last couple of months. Enjoy the ride. Thank you. Uh, most, first and foremost, uh, let yourself enjoy the experience. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ashton Morris, star tennis player here for the women's team at Baldwin Wallace University. And uh, she is 